So I have my htdocs directory open and in here I'm going to create a new project file called php7. And within there we have an index.php file and if I open up the browser we go to localhost.php7. Again make sure your Apache server is running and you should be able to see that that script is now in fact running. And if we take a look at this index.php file you'll see there that all it's doing is it's just echoing out a string right here. So I'm going to delete the string and now I want to create a function and this function is going to receive X amount of parameters. It could be a random number amount of parameters and then we're going to take a look at type coercion once I've done that. So I'm going to create a function and then I'm going to give it the name of pass and we're going to open and close the brackets and open and close the parentheses. So the parentheses define the execution context which is just simply a list of instructions that you give to the compiler. Once it's finished executing then what happens is it deletes the arguments that are stored in memory. Now we need to define the argument and this argument is going to be a special argument because it's going to take multiple parameters, multiple values. So I'm just going to put in the dot dot dot. So what this symbolizes is you could have maybe two parameters, maybe five, maybe 10, maybe 500 parameters. And what I want you to do is shove it inside of an array and we need to Go ahead and give that a name. So we're creating an argument which is just a temporary variable called int and this array because we put the dot 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 right there will receive all of the parameters, all of the values that are being passed in. All right so now what I want to do is I want to echo out the results and what I'm going to do is pop this in the pre element and what I want to do is use the JSON encode function and then we need to pass in the value which is going to be the value that's stored in the int array. You could say ints, be a little bit better. So we have an array that contains lots of ints and I'm just going to say JSON pretty print all caps. So this will just make this nicely formatted JSON text and then when I stick it in the pre tags it will look right in the browser. Now at the moment if I was to run the script nothing would happen because we're just creating the function we're not invoking the function. So I'm going to invoke the function and we're going to pass in parameters. So parameters are the values so if you had let's say the value of 20 or a string of 200 or a floating point number 22.22 or a boolean value such as true or false these are all parameters. Each one of these is a parameter and these parameters populate arguments which is variables and what will happen here is PHP will say ah oh, okay we have three dots and then we have this parameter right here called ints and that is essentially telling PHP create an array inside of this argument and then shove all of these values into that array. So I could have 200 parameters here or I could have maybe two parameters or in my case I'm going to have four parameters and it's going to take those parameters and it's going to shove them into the array and then all we're doing is we're saying right when you execute all I want you to do is just print out the contents of what's stored inside of the ints argument and I'm also going to end that with a semicolon right there and let's go back and hit refresh. So what it did was it received all of those parameters, those values, and it chucked it into the ints array. So that's how an array is symbolized in JSON. It has the square brackets. And then we have a few different data types in this array. We have an integer, we have a string, we have a floating point data type, and also we have the Boolean data type as well. Now this may be a bit of an issue. Let's say I wanted to iterate through the elements of this array so each one of these elements right here and I wanted to add them together well you can't add an integer with a string data type and also let's say I don't want any fractional numbers because they can cause problems when doing addition and so forth so that's a little bit of an issue and also I certainly can't use a boolean data type in a mathematical equation so in lieu of that fact 
what I need to do is I need to coerce them to be the same data type. And that is, I want them to be an integer. Now, before I continue, I want to explain two very important words in order for us to understand what we're doing in this lecture. The first one is polymorphism and the second one is coercion. Now, polymorphism just means in many forms. Now, this might sound complicated, but it's not. In fact, it occurs daily all the time around us. The environment, for example, polymorphs. It adapts, comes in many forms in order to adapt to the situation. So whenever you think of polymorphism, just think of adaptation. And in programming, we also have this. For example, let's say that we have the plus operator. Now in JavaScript, not in PHP, but in JavaScript, the plus operator polymorphs. So it can add two numbers together, but it can also concatenate two strings together. And also it can take a string and a number and it will then convert the number into a string and concatenate the two strings together. So you can see here that the plus operator adapts to the environment it's thrown into, whether it's given two numbers or whether its environment consists of two strings or a number and a string and so forth. So the plus operator in JavaScript polymorphs. So that's all polymorphism means. It just means coming in many forms or adapting to the environment around it. Now, likewise, we have coercion. And this is where the two topics will come together. If I try to coerce you, it means I'm trying to get you to do something. Likewise, if we do type coercion in PHP, what we're actually doing is we're telling the PHP compiler to coerce the data to fit a certain data type. So in my case, I have an array of four elements. Now, the issue is that the four elements can have different values. That's not a problem. The problem is the data types differ. So if I wanted to add all of the numbers together or all of the data together, then PHP will throw out an error and say, look, you're trying to add all these different data types. You have a number in here, which is an integer, and then you have a string and you also have a float and a Boolean data type. So this will cause an error through the PHP compiler. So I need to coerce these data types so that they match. And then I know it's safe to do, let's say a calculation of all of the elements in the array. So let's take my example. I have four elements in my array. Now, first of all, I need to decide what data type I want to coerce these elements into. So we're gonna go with an integer data type. So the first element in the array is of the type integer. The number 20 is an integer, so it doesn't have to coerce it. Now, secondly, we have a string. Now, if the string resembles a formatted number, then PHP is very smart. It can look at that string and convert it into a number. If, however, it contains something like a sentence or a word, then the PHP compiler will not be able to coerce that data type and you will get an error. And that's actually what you want. You want to get an error so that you know you're passing in a wrong parameter. So in my case, this string of 200, yes, it is a string, but it's not a word. It's not any sort of legible English. It is in fact all numeric. So that can quite easily be coerced into an integer. Next up, we have a floating point. Now a floating point isn't allowed in an integer data type. A floating point number simply is a fractional number. It has a decimal place. So all the PHP compiler has to do to turn that into an integer data type is strip away the decimal place and all of the fractional numbers after it. Once it gets rid of those fractional numbers, it's now an integer. You've only got the whole numbers left. Now also you may be thinking, well, now we have a Boolean value, true or false. And many programming languages polymorph true and false into zero and one. Zero being false and one being false true. So it's actually very easy to coerce the Boolean data type into an integer as well. So that process that has just taken place is called polymorphism. It adapted to the environment that it was given. We have many different values in this array and the PHP compiler will do its best to try and coerce the data, but there are limits and you may get errors, but that's good because it provides structure to our application and gives us the intended data type for our argument. 
So how do we coerce all of these parameters to be of the same data type? Well, when we declare the argument, what we need to do is we need to define the coercion. So this is the data type that we want to say to the compiler, look, try your best to coerce these values to this data type. And that could be, let's say, int. So I'm gonna try and coerce all of these values to be of the same data type. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and let's refresh in the browser. So now you'll notice that we have the first element that didn't need to be changed, that was an integer. The second element was a string and you'll now notice it doesn't have quotes around it, it just simply stripped the quotation marks around it and it produced an integer. And then also we have the floating point number 22.22 .22, and what it did was it stripped the decimal place away, so we got 22, and true was converted into the number one, and if we typed in false, that would convert to zero. Now, if we, let's say, had the string right here, if that had a decimal place in there, that decimal place would be stripped away. If I hit refresh, you'll notice nothing changed, but what it did was it took that string, it took it out of the string, and then it simply stripped away the decimal place. So it just left us with the whole numbers. Now do be careful, there are limits to what PHP can do. For example, if this string contained a special character such as the dollar or pound symbol, then you will get a fatal error. And then also if you had, let's say a formatted number like this with a comma in there then if i was to save this and hit refresh you'll notice that it said well you know it wasn't a very well formatted numeric string so it only returned just to this point where the comma resides and then it stripped away all the rest of it so you do have to be careful right there now, if I wanted to keep the decimal places, then what I'd need to do is coerce the data to a float. Now, the float data type will allow integers, no problem, but it will also allow the decimal places as well. So, if I hit refresh, there we go, we have the number 20, 200.44, 22.22, and zero for false. So we just kept those decimal places and we coerced the boolean and the string to be of the float data type. So it does have some polymorphism, but we know that there are limits to what we can do. Now on top of that, we can also coerce the data to be of the boolean data type by typing in bool. Please don't type in boolean, just type in bool. And then I can hit refresh. So what's gonna happen is if the number or string or whatever it is has a value, then it's going to be true. However, if it's, let's say, false, well, that doesn't need any coercion. That's already of the Boolean data type. But if it's zero, and only if it's zero, will you get false. So zero, the numerical zero will be converted into false. Let's take a look at the string right here. If I was to say zero in the string, would that work? The answer is yes. So what it did was it took that string, it converted it into an integer, and then it said one or naught, and it just said false. So that's fine. And also let's make it an empty string. Let's see about that. Again, an empty string will coerce to false. So have a play and really try to change these values because it's always worth having a bit of a play with these. Now on top of that, we also have the other primitive coercion data type. So primitive being either a string, an integer, a floating point or a boolean. They're your four main primitive type coercions. And we can now say string. So it's actually very, very easy to coerce all your data types into strings. And you pretty much won't get an error when you do that. If I was to hit refresh, you'd notice that we have everything now in quotation marks because everything is a string. And if it's false, it's going to be an empty string. And let's go ahead and set that to true. 
and just see what we get back. So if I say true, you'll notice that it produces a one within the string. And if we open up our script again, what we have here is general coercion. So all of the parameters, all of the values that are going to be passed into the array that's stored within this argument right here need to be of this data type. So you can do that sort of general coercion if you'd like. But also you can define your arguments and coercion individually. For example, I could say, right, I'm going to have an int argument and we want to force the parameter, the value that goes into this argument to be of the data type int. Likewise, I could have another argument called string and I could coerce it to be of the string data type and so on and so forth. So you have int, string, float and bool. These are the coercion types for primitive data. So if you think about primitive data, just think, you know, caveman back to primitive times. They're the simplest form of data. They're not like arrays or objects where they contain many pieces of information. No, they're just like a number or a string on its own or a floating point number or a true or false value on its own. They are primitive. They are very, very simple forms of data. But they're not the only types of coercion that you can apply. So in the next lecture, what we're going to do is take a look at other types of coercion for a bit more complex data. But these are your primitive data type coercions. And you will be using these a lot, I'm sure, throughout your programming career.